in Paris, possibly. going out, Neil. I know. Oh, it's gone out altogether now. Yeah, all right, thank you. I can do without the commentary, thank you. What is this, a new sport, fire lighting from Cheltenham? Yeah, well, if it was, Neil, your fire wouldn't even be out of the starting gates, by the way. Hey, listen, guys, I thought men were, like, supposed to be able to light fires. <laughs> That's a bit sexist. Men aren't born to be able to light fires. Yes, they are, actually. I was in a delivery room once. I saw this baby boy, came out, lit a match, cooked his own placenta at the bottom of the bed. <laughs> that is such rubbish, Peggy. How you, can you start a fire in a delivery room? Oh, it's true, actually. They made him do it in the car park. Maybe one day they'll discover that there is a fire lighting gene and that some men have it and some men don't. But all men have the being sarcastic gene, the getting pissed and being rude to the Indian waiter gene, and the never phoning the girl you're supposed to be going out with gene. Oh, yeah, is that all you ever talk about, ever? Martin, Martin, Martin. Martin, Martin, Martin. Martin, 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 Martin. Oh, what are you reading? Self-enlightenment and food. It's really fascinating. It says if you develop a relationship with food before you eat it, then you become a better person. All oh, right. So you actually go out with the parsnip you? <laughs> for a couple of years. You know, it's all going really well, and you move in together, and then you discover he's seeing a potato behind your back. So you have to flat share with five people who don't like you very much. Yeah, you know, that's one way of looking at it. Or you you look at the parsnip and um, you say thank you for being a parsnip. Um, out of all the parsnips in the world, you're really special and I'm going to eat you because you're the one that I want, and then you eat it. I can't read books no. anymore. Why not? Because words remind me of Alan, especially words that begin with love and murder. Hey, you'll never light a fire without. Try one of the tabloids. Shit burns really well. Yeah, thanks for your input, man, but this is my fire. <laughs> it's not a fire, it's a smoky mess. Anyway, your fire doesn't even exist yet. How can you own something that doesn't exist? He's got a point. I mean it, man. Don't push me. Rocky too. Rocky nothing. You're getting on my tits. Hey, they're going to have a fight. Fight, 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 fight. Do you bite fight, your fight. thumb at me, sir? Uh, no, but I do <laughs> bite my thumb, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If we're going to resolve this, we're going to have to do it properly, OK? Challenge him to a duel. Get your glove out. Come on. Be careful, this is a very expensive buckskin designer glove. You and Southerby, man, I challenge you to a duel. Ow! Oh, I'd uh, gladly accept your challenge and return it. Ow! Oh. I can see this is going to be bloody. That bloody hurt, man. Do it again. Yeah. Don't do it again. That once is enough. You didn't hit him, though. Outside, now. You and me. All right? Come on. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Hey! Come on. Bye, 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 bye. G'day, I'm Gus and I'm from Australia. And I'm Charlene and I'm from New Zealand, the civilised one. You want a fat lip, Charlene? Just try it, Gus, and write a farewell poem to your nuts. <laughs> we get on real well, but our countries don't get on too well with Britain, right? No, it's because we're thinking of leaving the Commonwealth. Yeah, nothing personal against the Queen. Mm. We just don't want some old age pensioner telling us what to do. Right. Charlene and me, though, we like poms. I mean, without poms, we wouldn't have anyone to slag off. Except the French, of course. <laughs> yeah, the French <laughs> don't even speak English. Yeah, they just go, oi, 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 You do that really well, Oh, thanks, you? Charlene. I mean, you, you know, as far as your country goes, this old septic isle and end of the bastards todger. You know, the great UK. Yeah, I mean, we view this place differently. Yeah, correct. I say, imagine if you're looking up a wombat's arse, right, with your nose right up its rim. That's how we see the UK. Yeah, no offence, eh? I mean, your Sheila's are well porkable. I've slapped a few hindquarters of British beef since I've been here, I can tell you. Will you panic, Because oh, I'm a Sheila. Oh, shit, sorry, Sha. Keep forgetting that your hairy armpits and your muscles. You want to control your tongue, Gas? It's not what the Sheila's say to me, mate. What are you talking about? He hasn't had a Sheila in years. The only things that go for him are canines. <laughs> so? Carlos de Jaca. It is time to name names. You know this man? Yes, Inspector. That is Omar. We know that. But what's his animal name? I'm sorry? His animal name! But he, he doesn't have an animal name. Don't make things difficult for yourself. OK, OK. We used to call him Omar the, the, the wolf. And Hamid? Hamid. His animal name, Hamid the... Hamid the, the, the hamster! And this? 
the Rupert, the bear, Brian, the snail, someone, the elephant, I forget his first name, head off the dog. I cannot wear my school shoes one more day, man. Yeah, like, if you had those trainers, that'd be, like, completely shabba, man. Yeah, my mum won't get them for me, right? She won't get them for me because she says they cost too much. God! God, how much do they cost then, right? Two? Two pounds? Two? No, 200 pounds, Dimo. 200 pounds. God, your mum is tight, Carol. <sighs> I know, man. But doesn't she realise that, like, your whole future and everything, like, depends on those trainers? No, man. She's going to be sorry, man, when I can't get a job right because I look like a complete nugget wearing my school shoes all the time, man. I'm going to run away from home. <sighs> yeah, man, you should run away from home and then they'll be sorry, right? Because, like, then you'll be adopted, right? And your foster parents will beat you up and you have to go homeless and you have to live in a box, right? Then they'll be sorry. Yeah, man. And then, like, I'd get adopted by really, like, nice foster parents, right, who bought me the trainers that I wanted, man, mm. and then I'd love them more than my real parents and they'd be <sighs> sorry then, man. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, don't look, don't look. Oh, my God, it's Reese and Morgan from the fifth year. Quickly, let's run, let's run. Oh, look at that. Just what a man needs after a hard day ploughing in the field. Crow and sparrow soup. I put in a couple of chaffinches, you know, give it a bit of extra crunch. Hark, who might that be on this dark and stormy night? <gasps> Tis my scarecrow I made not three weeks since. It has come to life and has an inkling to murder us both. God, it's pissing down up there. I'm bleeding right through. What on earth possessed you to stick me in the middle of a wide open muddy field without so much as a pair of arms or a bleeding cagoule? Are you mad? I never, I never dreamed. Excuse us a minute. What's going on, Eve? What, what, do you, what do you mean? I just made this scarecrow last Yeah, time. but it's a girl scarecrow. Oh, yeah. You've made a girl scarecrow with great big fat boobies. Yeah, but I fancy a change. What? You know? A change from what? From me? No, not exactly. I mean... It's... What have you been doing with her? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> You've been home the last three weeks with straw in your pants. Yeah, but I've been haymaking, haven't I? I'm better to have straw in my yeah, pants. Yeah, I mean... straw with lipstick on. You've been cavorting about the fields with this... Straw flues it! Uh, excuse me, love. Are you trying to insult me or what? There's no way I'd fancy him. I may be a scarecrow, but, you know, I do have standards. I'd rather snog an ace stack than that walking compost heap. Now, wait a minute! That really... You should hear the things he tells me about you. How your armpits smell of garlic. Yeah, and how you haven't done it since last candle mass day, and even that was while you were asleep. Oh, God, I thought I felt someone... Look, I, I didn't know she could hear me. You get lonely out there in the field. You need someone to talk to. He really? says he sometimes even has fantasies about that old sow in the backyard. That's it, people. Get out. I, I would. I... I've been meaning to do this for years, you lecherous layabout. Don't... And don't come back. <sighs> Do you want anything to eat, dear? Oh, yeah, great smashing there. Uh, I'd love a wicker work sandwich, right. please, look. Coming right up. Hello? I want my mummy. It's all right, calm down, calm down. Now, uh, what's your name, son? My name's Tommy. Tommy, all right. Now, are you by yourself, Tommy? Yes, my mum has gone and left me and I'm all alone. Right, now, calm down, all right? We're going to get someone over to see you as soon as possible. Now, do you know where your mummy went, Tommy? She's in Clacton. Right. How long have you been left on your own, Tommy? Six weeks. I haven't got anything to eat and I haven't had a bath and my hair's got really long. Right. Now, this is very, very important, Tommy. Now, where are you calling from? First year halls of residence, University of East Anglia. Uh, I first realised that I was um, medieval when I was at school. Um, uh, the, the headmaster the teacher at the time, Mrs Peterson, asked the class, you know, what do you want from life? And every, all the kids sort of said, oh, sweets and crisps. And I asked for a good harvest and a cure for the pox. And I, I sort of knew then that I was medieval and everyone did it. it was, the atmosphere was electric. And I was, shortly after that, I was taken away and given a series of electric shocks and spent the rest of my childhood in a large white room. But um, my favourite artist is Bruegel, which is very medieval. And my favourite painting is the battle between carnival and Lent, which depicts an ongoing theme in medieval time, which is the battle between carnival and Lent. And um, I, my, I myself took on that, that battle recently the, to, against religion, against the conformity. By, I went to my local church and I juggled three oranges during the Sunday sermon. And the vicar, you know, being a, a man of the clergy, um, beat the shit out of me. So I won, really. <laughs> All right, Poppy, what we're going to do is we're going to put you out, cut you open, take out your internal organs and eat them, OK? Putting her out, Doctor. Right, I'm making the incision now. 
Check the oxygen, please, nurse. Oxygen, fine. OK. Blunt-ended forceps, please. Thank you. Right, I'm going in. Damn. What is it? I... I... What? I'm very, very slowly turning into a duck. Oh, shit. Look, we've probably got a good 20 minutes or so before I completely become a duck, so I think we should qu crack on. Are you with me, nurse? Of course. Good. Then let's get this show back on the road. More oxygen, please. Swab again. More light, please. Uh, tweezers. And, and web feet and waddling around in circles, sitting around in ponds with my ass in the air, eating damp bits of bread and whack, whack. Hello, surfers. Hi, surfers. Tell them about that. When What's that, that? Tell them about what? That right royal famous... Oh, yeah, Prince was. Charles, right, yeah. Prince Charles. He yeah. come down here. He come down here to open some pin factory or something. Yeah, and his retinue of grovellers, they came down here to show him the, you know, the way that the, the surf industry, as yeah. these prats so like to call it, you know. We're lying around, half cotton cider, and there he is, <laughs> yeah. the, what is he? As well as Prince Charles, what's he called? He's uh, Duchess of Cornwall. Yeah. That's right. And, and so he says to Bob here, he says, is surf up today? That's right. And I says, why don't you look behind you, lazy grockle? Do you know, it's right there. Do you know or, what I mean? Or does one of your equerries have to do it for you? Yeah, it was really... And they were like, he was just like, oh, you know, he was all right. But he made some sort of very unwitty comment and looked yeah. at his shoes or something. While his slaves or whatever his they are. slaves, they just look daggers at us like that, like we were in trouble. And I trouble. says... Yeah, says, you don't look like you do on the stamps, you do. That's which right, is, uh, he said that. It's brilliant. Which, which is, is wrong. I mean, it's wrong, wrong because yep. it, he's not on the stamps, is he? His, he won't be on the stamps until his mum's feeding the worms, you know? And but I then said, he said, he said, no, I he's said, all right, you tell him, you tell him. I said, here, I don't have fancy that missus of yours since she started working out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, of course, that was it. I mean, they just, like, they, he just sort of said something. We said we liked her biceps, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and then his uh, crew of grovellers, they got him out as, as, as fast as a fart in a gale after <laughs> that. He was gone right. out of here, fiddling right. with the cufflings. That's right. I called after him. I said, Oi, you know, tell, give our regards to your wife, like that, because we really fancy her, do you know what I mean? We think she's quite tasty. And that was that, really? <laughs> that was that. Quite welcome to come in any time they like. Any yeah. time they like. Yeah, yeah, we send him out on a tidal wave. That's right. We get his wife in one of them tight-fitting O'Neill wetsuits. Yeah, we'd be well away by all accounts. That's right. <laughs> so, so, surf up. All right. I want a good, clean fight following WBA rules, except you're allowed to kick each other in the balls. OK? Come on. Well, come on. Oh, you come on. You come on. Oh, you're afraid to come on, aren't you? Oh, maybe not. Oh, really? Well, come on then if you're not afraid oh, to come on. Oh, you're coming oh. on, are you? Oh, I'm coming come on, on then. I'll tell you what, Nelly Shut. Neil. Cross this line, you see what happens. What, that line? No, not Kick that him. line. Oh, this on line. the head. Oh, cross oh. that line, see. Oh. Right, you've crossed it. Right, there. Hey, watch it, man. Oh, watch it. Oh, watch it, man. Oh, shall I watch it? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can have it. Come on, come on. You're in trouble. Come on, if you're scared. It's big trouble. Oh, big trouble. It's much trouble you're outside now. No. Oh, we are outside. Don't change the subject. Oh, come on, you little. Thing. Come on, we're just then. pushing each other. Come on. This is so boring. We should have given them guns. I'm going to go inside. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Is everyone going inside? Sally. Everyone. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Mm. <coughs> All right. <sighs> it was about. <sighs> Three years ago now, I had one of those out-of-the-body experiences. My heart stopped, apparently, and suddenly I was floating down a long tunnel with a bright light at the end. There was an overwhelming feeling of peace and love coming from this light, so I thought I might be in for a shag or something. Just before I got to this light, though, I took a sharp left. And there was the devil, stuffing his mouth with human corpses. And he said to me, your time hasn't come yet, go back into your body. But before I went back, I asked him if he knew any decent blasphemy. And he said, uh, stick God up your kilt. Which I thought was a bit lame, actually. Coming from the devil, I thought it. I didn't say anything, you know. Well, he was the devil. Obviously, I'm going to die now, but it's uh, it's rather handy, actually, because uh, I've still got the devil's biro, so I can give it back to him when I see him. Well, basically, we joined the nunnery when we were, like, 16, and we feel that we were goaded into it and that if we could go back again and do it again, then we wouldn't do it. 
Yeah, I mean, like, um, you can't go out to discos or nothing like that. And you have to wear this habit and, you know, you're not allowed to wear, like, jeans or, you know, like, band t-shirts or earrings or makeup or nothing like that, except under your habit. Mm. And, um, I mean, you can't have sex, like, you know. Cos we were told when we came in that you'd be, like, married to Jesus Christ, yeah. you know. But it's not the same as having a boyfriend. No, it's not the same, like. Boyfriend. <laughs> Espressos and then the bill, please. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Sorry, hello. How are you? Well. Don't answer that. Do you have the results of my test? Shh. Not here. Everything's fine. Fine. <laughs> Good. So can I go home then? Home? You want to go home? Yes, when I'm better. Better? That's better! Why do you want to feel better? Because I want to go home. Don't you like it here? Yes, but I... We can let you have some spare organs. What? We've got some spare tonsils we could let you have. An appendix, fresh. A set of wisdom teeth. And some old magazines from the waiting room, maybe. We're not saying. Look, I just came in to have some water on the knee removed. Did you get a receipt? Don't answer that! Can I go home, please? Let's see, shall we? Yes, you can go! Good. Goodbye. Go on, then. Everything's fine. Fine. Welcome to the future. Name's Mallet, Jim Mallet, DSS, Fraud Squad. <laughs> Quick, Jim, the doctor's escaped. We'll see about that. Gotcha. Here, what's your game then? That's the cleaning lady, the world's oldest and kindest living person. Oh. OK, Boris. Why do you make me do it? You know you're going to talk. Why do you make me do it? How can you do it? 
How can you live with yourself? How can you do this job, surrounded by garbage every day? How can you take it home with you? How can you take it to bed with you, gnawing deep inside you? How can you do it? Like this. Four! <laughs> 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 all right, all right, I'll talk. There's a secret hideout. You go down the road, just by the canal. <laughs> Can Mallet really be squashed? Or will he be back for football action and adventure in next week's monkey shaving episode of Mallet, the day the gyro stopped? Hello, are you feeling boom-bastic? Oh, me too. I was chatting to Shaggy the other day when we were recalling his breakthrough single, Carolina. We were debating whether Ragga was the precursor to jungle music or was it the early church music of Monte Verdi? With its incessant beat and on-the-edge lyrics, jungle would seem to have very little in common with the Italian 16th century magicals of Monte Verdi. However, on close inspection, you can find little bits of old soggy bus ticket in your trousers when they come out of the washing machine. I was listening to a spot of Skunk Anansi yesterday, and as I was being exhorted to intellectualise my blackness, I was put in mind of Herman and the Hermits. Now, the interesting thing was, they weren't actually hermits. They lived near other people, and Herman actually wasn't Herman. He was Peter Noon. An echo belly really are people. They're not an echo and a belly. So where does that leave us as we approach the end of the millennium? Well, as Ultimate Chaos once said, no man is an island, but some men are very big. Well, they didn't actually, but perhaps they should have done. See you Sunday. Coolio. So could you tell us a little bit about your daughter's problem? Um, well, it all started about two weeks ago. I just asked her, asked her a very simple question. It was something like, you know, could you take the rubbish out? And um, she just flew at me. Why exactly wouldn't she do it? Well, she, she, she was saying that she couldn't do it. I'm sorry, she's back. Can we, can we stop? Why didn't you come home on time, Saffron? You knew the television people were coming. You know why. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You know why! Well, I don't know if I do. I'm not telepathic, am I? Because I'm fat, that's why. I can't do anything because I'm fat. I can't go out because all the girls are thin and I'm not, I'm fat. Well, I, th I don't think that's true, Saffron. I think you should go out a little bit more. I can't go out because if I go out, people are gonna think that I think that I'm thin. And that's gonna be really embarrassing. They're gonna look at me and they're gonna think, she's going out because she thinks she's thin, but I'm not, I'm fat. Besides, I can't find any clothes to fit me. I must weigh about 32 stone. I've got fat hair, fat nose, fat nostril, fat eyelids, fat knee, fat toenail. I can't even go to the shops anymore because if I do, people are going to faint at the huge horror of my fatness. Well, I mean, if you really, really feel like that, I mean, I think you're lovely, mine, but if you really feel that way, why don't, why don't you just go on a diet, you know? Eat a little bit less. What? Take some exercise. What? What are you trying to say? You trying to say I'm fat or something? Is that what you're trying to say? I hate you! She doesn't really hate me. Yeah, come on then. Come on, come on then. Cross the line. Come on. Come on. Yeah, give it to me, Shut up. Try using your fist. It might help. Get it, Mr. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Use your nails, girl. Girl. I'm not girl. a girl. You're I'm a girl. Come on. Girl. Yeah. girl. Come yeah. on, Mr. Hardy. Just because you've got a quilted jacket, you think that protects yeah, you? Yeah, Mr. Leather Face. Yeah, Leather Face, Leather, 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 leather Bottom. Jacket. Hard man, that's yeah. me. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You push off. Punch. Poo, poo. Piddler. Here's my fighter friend who's going to drop a bomb on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on. Ow! Hi. That's my TB jab! Yeah.